Bienvenue to Welcome to Reporters CM France 24. I'm Marco, and in this edition, the split at the heart of Turkey, a sacred site in Istanbul made into a museum by the secular founder of modern day Turkey, has been turned back into a mosque once again by President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, a project symbolic of what critics fear is a wider Islamification of the state. Shona Bhattacharya joins us now from Istanbul, this week's reporter. Shona, is this uh, change, this Islamification of Turkey, something you've observed? Yes, uh, and in fact, uh, it's something that's kind of difficult to really put your finger on. Uh, in fact, we took more, more than four months uh, to uh, to film this report and to put it all together. And that's because uh, we had no way of filming uh, inside or anything in relation to these Imam Hatib schools, these schools uh, that are public and Muslim. And in fact, the director of the school, the Ministry of Education, even the Alumni Association responded positively to our interview requests. And yet every time, it didn't happen. And this is actually a very classic story here uh, in Turkey. As a journalist, it's impossible to get an interview from an official source. And then journalists are accused uh, of being biased. So, of course, they will be uh, if uh, they have a hard time staying neutral, uh, if uh, an entire side of the story uh, refuses to talk to them. More from Shona after the report filmed by her with Lud Ludovic de Foucault and the Kilian Kogan, Turkey, the power of the minarets. Hagia Sophia has been a mosque since the 24th of July, and Osman is ecstatic. My um, workplace is just next to the Hagia Sophia. So uh, I attend the first um, Friday prayer in the square, and then, uh, of course, I visit inside of the mosque, uh, inside of the Hagia Sophia mosque. I wanted to see uh, this place as a mosque. Yes, I visited before. And it was sad. It was a sad experience for, for me and many people, I think. It was a huge symbol for the conquest, uh, also for the, for the Muslim um, existence in the city. In his enthusiasm, Osman would like only practicing Muslims to have access to the site. You know that I don't like uh, when I see people um, just wandering around, uh, like visiting a beach or any a touristic place. It's not a touristic place. It is uh, something um, that matters for Muslim. And you see that people, you know, people really visiting like this. And only a small place people pray. It is not uh, compatible with the spirit of Hagia Sophia, I think. I understand people's, um, you know, excitement. Yes, it's a good thing. They want to see it. But not that way, I think. For close to a millennium, Hagia Sophia was the biggest church in the world before becoming a mosque following the conquest of Constantinople by the Ottomans in 1453. Five centuries later, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk converted it into a museum. Decision... Um, was not accepted, was not uh, regard, regarded legitimate by Muslims. And what is, what is a Turk? Can we separate Turk from Muslim? No, we can't. In this case, we won. And uh, because of that, I say, I don't care about Erdogan's motivation. And I, I appreciate, I fully appreciate this decision. Um, but in general, in overall, um, Islam uh, won or will win, we see. At the end, of course, Islam will win. The president regards religious and national identity as one and the same. He has been in power for 19 years. That's an entire generation. And the ruling AK party has tried to mold it in its image. Gemileri karadan yürüten Fatih. Abdülhamid'in aklı sana miras. Hamza'nın kılıcı da. This video is called Sen Kimsen or Who Are You? 
It was produced by the ruling AK party and lists the spiritual, historical and intellectual figures that the party has designated as the forgers of Turkish youth identity. They're mostly men, many of them from the Islamic tradition. The ultimate role model, however, is Recep Tayyip Erdogan himself. Recep Tayyip Erdoğan'sın. Sizler yeni ve büyük Türkiye'nin aydınlık suretlerisiniz. Among those absent from the video are non-Muslims and secular leaders. Atatürk is mentioned only in passing and not as a model for Turkish youth. Proof the AKP is trying to erase his memory, according to this association dedicated to Kemal's legacy. They're trying to erase Atatürk. They're trying to take him away from us. They're trying to get rid of secularism. In Turkey, most people are Kemalist, secular and democratic, and that will never change. Our essence is Atatürk, and no one can change our essence. Ferry Day is the president of this chapter of the countrywide NGO. She takes us on a tour of monuments in Izmir dedicated to the man known as the father of the Turks. She believes her hero's legacy remains attractive. The youth are more interested in Kemalist ideals every day because they too are conscious of the importance of modernity, of the republican system, of secularism. Of Turkey's nine public holidays, four are directly linked to Ataturk. His portrait is everywhere, and his message remains most evident along the Aegean coast. Here, as in the rest of the country, every year life comes to a halt with a minute of silence on the anniversary of his death. Members of the NGO dedicated to his memory, most of whom are older, get together and talk of their boundless admiration for the founding father. They can never take him from us. No one can erase Ataturk. The anniversary of his death serves to remind us that he's immortal and that it's only his body that no longer exists. I've never seen his body, but when I hear his voice, my eyes fill up with tears. Listening to his voice gives me chills. Ataturk means Turkey, and Turkey means Ataturk. He was a great leader, a historic leader. Ataturk was a benediction, a gift from Almighty Allah to the Turkish nation, and that's why everything he did was met with success. Faced with Erdogan's vision of a more Muslim Turkey, these secular Turks fear their way of life is under threat, in particular, Kemal's advances in women's rights. No, there's no question. Today, if I'm free, if I can breathe, if you can find me here, it's thanks to Ataturk and no one else. I will never understand women who put that in jeopardy. To this day, Ataturk remains a sacred institution. Insulting his memory can land you behind bars. And yet, in some schools, his portrait is harder and harder to find. This is the Recep Tayyip Erdogan Imam Hatib School, a public institution with a heavy Islamic focus. The president himself attended it, and it has since been renamed in his honor and renovated to the tune of 9 million euros. These images come from a promotional video. Our repeated requests for an interview with either the director of the school or an education ministry official were denied. As regards the curriculum, Imam Hatip High Schools dedicates about a quarter of weekly lessons to elective courses. But in reality, these electives are classes linked to Sunni Islam. Ishik studies Imam Hatip schools and has watched their number rise significantly since the AKP came to power. 
Originally created to train future imams, President Erdogan now wants to see as many students as possible get their education there. The fact that other religious or confessional groups don't have similar types of schools shows that the state is not impartial. These schools only exist for Sunni Islam. We can observe that over the last few years, the President of the Republic often praises these schools. According to figures from the Education Ministry, the state spends more per student in these schools than elsewhere. Yet a wide majority of former students say they regret having studied there. And according to the OECD, the level of instruction is lower than in secular schools that have not been spared the president's focus either. The theory of evolution, for example, is no longer part of the curriculum. Yet it's in the scholastic realm that secularism is putting up its biggest fight. The president himself has had to concede defeat. I believe that if one evaluates the last 18 years frankly, we have accomplished historical advances in every domain. But in the domains of teaching, education and culture, we have not been able to achieve the progress we'd hoped for. We have a young population, thanks to God. But we aren't able to totally implement our vision of civilization. More and more young people in Turkey reject religious dogma, a phenomenon that the local press calls deism, or personalized a la carte Islam. Others go further, like Mesut and Jihan, and identify as atheists. For us, being atheist is a mentality that rejects all gods and illusions, a mentality that rejects them and that allows us to live according to our own truths, and that tends towards humanism. For me, being an atheist is mostly about freedom. It's living through questioning and searching for truth without being subordinate. According to a 2019 poll, the number of young people who say they're religiously conservative dropped by 7 percent. But changing religious affiliations comes with a price. I was working somewhere for six years, and until I became an atheist, I never had a problem with my salary or anything. Why? Because I was still Muslim. But as soon as I became an atheist, starting in February of last year, my salary, that was, let's say, 275 euros a month, they reduced it to 165 euros the next month, and then even lower, to 110. My family is extremely conservative. My father even traveled to Mecca and saw the Kaaba. But no one can change people's mentality. There's enormous pressure. I was shunned by my family, my friends left me, and my wife dumped me. It's a form of psychological pressure. Though Recep Tayyip Erdogan was elected primarily by conservative Muslims who had felt like second-class citizens because of their faith, Today, their children are seeking their own relationship with Islam. Many of them will be going to the polls for the first time in the next presidential election in 2023. Shona Bhattacharya is still with us. Shona, thank you for your report. Clearly, there are two versions, two visions even, of what Turkey should be. Can these visions be reconciled? Well, today, uh, not really. There is a real split in Turkish society. On one hand, those who have a more secular vision and lifestyle, more European, or at least more open to that part of the world. And on the other hand, this vision of Turkish identity that has its roots in the Muslim religion that regards Islam as a central pillar of Turkey today. This uh, researcher that we spoke to in the report told us a little bit more detail about this version uh, of Turkish identity. In Imam Hatip schools, as well as those that we call normal schools, there are now classes on so-called spiritual, national, moral and human values. Most of the time, these national values mostly reflect Turkic values at the expense of universal values and ignore the perspective of other ethnic groups. 
As for the spiritual values, they're mostly religious. Today, uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan has built a discourse where those who don't define themselves as he does, Muslim, Turkic, heterosexual, uh, are not only in the opposition, uh, but they're accused of being anti-Turkish. Shona, when Erdogan came to power, there were many debates, and these debates are continuing, about how Turkey would change, how it wants to change. I'm wondering if you were finding that he's actually managed to change the country to fit his vision. Is there evidence of that? Well, the next elections are slated for 2023, so he has uh, two years or, or more uh, to fulfill his vision. But over the last 19, since he came to power, we've actually witnessed uh, the opposite in Turkish society. Nothing drastic, but definitely notable. According to a 2019 poll, 34% of Turkish women wear the headscarf uh, versus 37% uh, 10 years before. That same study says 65% of Turks today fast during Ramadan compared to 77% a decade ago. Now, these numbers are not just about young people. They concern all ages. Now, these changes are apparent despite the at least 12,000 new mosques built by the president since coming to power in 2002, despite the reconversion of Hagia Sophia and other museums, former churches, uh, into mosques like in Trabzon, and of course, despite the investments that we've seen in education in these uh, religious uh, public uh, Muslim schools. So Erdogan now has a new card, uh, that of a new constitution on which he is working uh, as we speak and uh, that he hopes could help him stay in power. Shona Bhattacharya in Istanbul, thank you very much indeed. You can see Shona's report uh, once again via our website france24.com. This is Reporters. Thank you for watching. Stay with us. Most of all, stay safe.